Okay, so ladies, last time, uh, last week, we talked about a uh, audio interface and how to connect the audio interface to your laptop. And this week, we are going to talk about capturing the perfect sound uh, from start till the end. And last time, I forgot to record the screen as well. Now, that's why I'm making this video right now quickly, so we can quickly re recap. And that way, we can make sure you did not miss anything. Okay, so let's talk about capturing the perfect sound. So this is a picture of a sound wave. When you record it on your DAW, which is digital to audio workstation, when you record it on your computer, on your DAW, this is how it's gonna look like. So you just took a picture of your uh, sound actually. So this is a picture of the wave sound. So you can tell, a let's say this part is a little bit high this part is a little bit low so you can just have like an idea about the sound wave when you record it so you can tell that okay i have some high ends and i have some peaks and i have some low freaking uh, low areas here okay so let's talk how uh, we get to this point uh, before we start we need to understand a few points so when we are building our home studio especially when we are living in small apartments in New York. <laughs> this is going to be a super useful tool for you. Uh, just general knowledge, sound travels super fast and even faster than light. Why do we care? We shouldn't care normally, exactly. But we have to care because this creates problem for us during recording sessions. You do not need to know everything to start recording, but this info will help you understand why we do certain things. Okay, so here's the proof that fast traveling sound. So we are lucky to capture it because it's traveled too, too fast. But do we even know what we actually capture? No. So I have a video here and I'm going to uh, share this video in the link below. And this, dem uh, this video demonstrates how sound travels in the room and bouncing from the walls so many times, <laughs> which is terrible for us. And our super sensitive microphone captures all of it. And what we capture, we capture what and how many times? We don't know. But there are some physics rules, but you don't have to worry about that. Just know that when you record, when you record something to the right microphone, just think about it. This is you. This looks like a speaker. I know it looks, doesn't look like you, uh, but just think about it. This is you and you sing and this mac microphone captures your voice, right? You think that this is going to capture directly no this is going to go to your walls and bounce from your walls and all those other other signals are all all of them are going to be recorded on this microphone so this is going to be super crowded area for our microphone and that is going to create problem for us in the mixing process so we're not trying to build the perfect studio for you ladies we are just trying to build something that we can actually use for professional recording. And we are tr trying to do this in our small uh, bedrooms, in our small living rooms. Uh, so that's why just some of the information will be super useful for you. But I'm also trying to give some general information along the way. Uh, just take a look at this picture, same signal, same sound is bouncing around multiple times and it sounds different. So the sound comes to your ear differently. Look at this, only two people, because there are only two, uh, because of only two people and because of uh, less surfaces, only two surfaces, so you're gonna hear the sound differently in this area. And look at this area, it's crowded, right? And the sound is gonna change in this area. You're gonna, sound, you're gonna hear it differently. So it depends on when you're creating your home studio, it depends on the walls, it depends on the furnitures you have. So everything is related to one thing, too, too many uh, signals uh, bouncing around and your mac uh, mac microphone captures all of it. So less people, less surface to reflect. That's correct. So when you uh, imagine you're a live performer and you'll go to, you go to a show, and place is empty. So you do the sound check, everything's correct. And then when people comes in, a lot of people comes in and it sounds different all of a sudden. All of a sudden you're screwed. 
it's not you, ladies, I'm telling you, it's not you, it's the crowd. So many surfaces to reflect on, that's why. Mm -hmm. So what you record might not be what you heard. So this is the direct sound, this is reflected sound, this is the reflections of the sound, all of them are recorded by, uh, with your microphone. Okay, we understand that part. Uh, what we can do about this when we are recording in our home studio, what can we do to prevent this problem? First of all, our home studio is never going to look like this because this is an anech, anechoic, uh, sorry, uh, forgive my uh, pronunciation, anechoic chamber. And this is very expensive to build. So there is no reflection in this room, no reflection. So actually, in a place like this, you get to record what you actually uh, what you actually hear. And an echoic chamber, no reflection, suddenly you hear your blood in your veins because there's no reflection to distract you. And I'm sorry, but this is the only place you will be able to record what you actually hear. Reflection eliminated. Mm -hmm. But this is impossible to build in a New York apartment building, right? So... <laughs> This is that is why you see all these weird wall decorations on the walls of a recording studio. See, this is all these are all to eliminate the reflection. Uh, it's all to get a clean sound from your mouth to the microphone. And those will prevent the reflections of the sound. So when you sing, your your voice is not going to bounce around and come back to the microphone five, six, eight times. Mm hmm. And this uh, and this these will absorb the sound. So we're talking about the uh, absorb absorbing panels. So you're gonna see this stuff when you go on a go to a professional recording studio. You're gonna see these, or you can get some of these online if you are gonna serious gonna if you're seriously gonna start recording, and you can get some of these. But you don't have to. You can totally find some cheaper options. Mm -hmm. So this, what this panel does, what, the, what they do, here is a sound, comes to the panel and this panel is absorbing the sound and here is a reflected sound, see, very less. So this is going to absorb the sound and it's going to uh, eliminate the refl reflection for you. That way you can get a clean sound, mm -hmm. clean input signal. Mm -hmm. An input signal is data and data has to be clean. Anyways, what can we do at home? Look at this. This is like a little reflection filter, portable vocal booth. It's 88 bucks. Actually, I found yesterday, I checked some of these and they even have 30 bucks, 20 bucks on eBay. Uh, you're going to have multiple options. You're going to see multiple options. And here is another solution for recording at home. Look at this blankets. <laughs> so you just sing here and that way your signal is not going to bounce around too much. You're going to get a clean, more clean signal by this way. And look at this. I believe these are for about 20 bucks. So you just put the microphone inside and you just get a clean sound here. That way the, your vocal is not going to bounce around the walls. Look at these walls. These are bad surfaces. Walls are bad, ladies. Walls are really bad for your recording. So, mm -hmm. And another one. Look at this. <laughs> this is really fun one and these are super cheap i believe again 20 bucks 30 bucks you can find used one on ebay and another one for you again you can create an environment for yourself like this uh, the point here is just create a vocal booth for yourself if you can if you cannot it's totally fine just get one of these little guys and that is also going to help you but if you can if you can create something like this it's just going to be easier and if you're going to re record vocals every day if you're a single and if you're writing songs if you want to write down uh, if you want to record those ideas uh, and if you want to do that professionally then you're going to need to create this uh, routine in your home just don't don't do it in the corner of your room because corner is bad corner is always bad because you're going to have a lot of bass frequencies on the corners mm -hmm. okay so this is our girl she just created an environment for herself to record better okay hit maker dr luke studio look at this do you wanna see his studio do you know how many uh, awards they won this guy dr luke uh he's a very famous uh, 
music producer and he is a hit maker and are you ready to see his recording studio and this is Katy Perry of course you all know and are you ready of course you're ready <laughs> let's go okay here it is so Katy Perry was singing right here look at this carpets all to el elim eliminate uh, the reflection of the sound mm -hmm. So this is where she was singing. So she didn't have like an expensive professional vocal booth. No, because those are like $8,000, $10,000. You don't need those. Look at this. They just created and look at all these carpets. And another producer who loves carpets. Uh, this producer, uh, he wrote this song. Uh, he actually made the song Shine Bright Like a Diamond. You probably all know that song. So this guy is famous for that and he loves the carpets. So you just get the vocalist and put it in the carpet. <laughs> no, of course not. But uh, yeah, you can totally uh, use whatever you have in your apartment. Uh, you can use blankets, you can use carpets. So this is the producer of the songs, Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Mm -hmm. uh, your ability to record good takes is not about the tools. It's about you. It's about your commitment to get it to work. It is your passion to get it to done get it done they got it done dr luke was playing guitar with bands he was broke the entire time he did not give up he got it done katie Bitter perry was playing and singing at the hamburger place she was broke she did not give up give up and she got it done and look at the outcome here teenage dream album sold millions and millions mm -hmm. okay so let's do this at home let's do this okay here is you singer here's the microphone Remember, six, a uh, six inches uh, space. Don't forget that six inches space because then you're gonna have the proximity uh, proximity problem. Mm -hmm. So okay, so your signal goes here to your microphone, and signal goes here to your audio interface, and your audio interface goes to your DAW, which is the digital to audio workstation, and that way you get to record the signal directly from your uh, to, from from you and to the uh, to your computer but along the way of course these details are really important like uh, we got the mix set up but uh, just make sure you're not too distant from the microphone and just make sure you're not too close then you're gonna have proximate to effect and I'll get into those stuff later just make sure T is six inches six inches is, is good for a large diaphragm microphone and for stage microphone like this, uh, this is a cardioid pattern uh, dynamic microphone. You can come a little bit more closer for dynamic microphones because they have small, a uh, small, uh, di di uh, they have very small diaphragm. So uh, you can come a little bit closer for the for this type of microphones. Audio interface is c interface is connected via USB. So here is your microphone. And you're going to connect your microphone to your audio interface. And your audio interface is going to raise the quality. Your audio interface is going to fix it for you. And USB cable, it goes here, here to your uh, DAW, which is your computer. And once you're doing this on the process, you how are you going to hear yourself? Here is how you're going to hear yourself. So this is the device you will need to record and get the audio from your computer and that way you can hear it, hear it while as you're recording. So microphone and audio interface, with the microphone and audio interface, this is the cable you're gonna need. We call this XLR cable and it's a balance cable and the XLR cable, uh, you're gonna connect your microphone to your audio interface, here it is. And don't forget the pop filter. If you already have one, it's good. If you do not have one, I can all even, if you do not want to pay for it, uh, if you do not want to buy one, I can show you how to make one because I used to make some of these when I was broke, when I didn't have any tools. <laughs> so I can totally show you how to make those. So audio interface and laptop. So here's a USB cable. Here's our little audio interface. By the way, these are, I guess, 90 bucks, something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, but here's how you connect to your laptop. Here is this. Here it is. USB cable and USB cable. That's all. So you get to be fam familiar with the cables uh, along the way. 
And here is another audio interface. Uh, some inter audio interfaces have FireWire option, which is faster. But for to start, if you're a beginner, you're fine. You can totally use, you can totally get it audio interface like this with the USB connection. And if you want better quality or actually if you want faster options, then you're going to go for FireWire. So I don't even use this FireWire yet. I don't have a device for that. So right now I use something similar to this. So and I use USB cable. So FireWire option is just for let's say next year we come back here and we talk about audio interfaces and you're going to tell me about the stories that you up upgraded your audio interface to FireWire and then we're going to talk about those stuff. So <laughs> you're, this is just to make your um, workflow faster. So how to set up your audio interface on lo in Logic. A, here it is. You go on Logic, click on pref Preferences and click on Audio and that's it. And when you click on uh, Audio you're going to see devices and you're going to pick your audio interface here. So let's say my audio interface is Apogee Quartet. So I'm just going to see all Apogee Quartet here and I'm going to pick that. That way your DAW, which is your uh, computer, your software that you use to record. So your DAW is going to uh, recognize your audio interface next time. So you do not have to do this each time. You do it once and you're good. But sometimes there are times that, you know, computers are always problems. So you can just go click on the uh, preferences, click on audio, and you can t quickly check if your input is being recognized. What is your input? Your audio interface. That is your input. So, okay. Set up your audio interface in Ableton. How do you do that? You just click on uh, uh, preferences again, and you choose your audio interface here. Okay, set up your audio interface in Cubase. Same thing. You click on Studio, you click on Studio Setup, and you're going to pick your audio interface here, whichever brand you got. So you just pick your input. I keep saying input because audio interface, yes, input and also output too, but we're going to talk about that later. So set up your audio, audio interface in Fruity Loops. If you're using Fruity Loops, you just click on Audio. First, click on Settings and click on Audio and pick, pick your audio interface. So it's the same thing for every uh, for all the AWS, same thing. Set up your audio interface in Auto City. Click on Devices and uh, pick your audio interface. Okay, uh, set up your audio interface in Pro Tools. This is how you do it. Click on a uh, playback engine and you choose your audio interface. Same thing. So you will record audio. And this is an audio signal. This is where what you're about to record. So when you record audio, your audio signal is going to look like this. This is what you want to get. So select an audio channel. Otherwise, where are you going to record the audio, right? First, pick an audio channel or create one. Create an audio channel. That way you, ca you can record your audio on that audio channel. So first you're going to record uh, first you're going to have to create an audio channel and then you're going to record on that audio channel. Okay, let's talk about recording audio and uh, logic. So what you do, first you're going to create a track because okay, you've got the input, you've got the singer, uh, you set up the audio interface, but where are you going to record the audio? Where? Right? So first you're going to uh, create a track, create a track, create an audio track because we're going to record audio. OK, and click on create. You can just uh, set mono because, but, you know, I'll expand that later. We, uh, right now, the topic is recording vocals. That's what we're practicing. So just create an audio mono audio channel. Mm -hmm. That way you're going to have only one signal or mono signal. OK, recording, record uh, audio in logic. So here's the link. I'm going to share this link down below. Uh, this is what, how you record. This video is going to uh, help you to understand better how to uh, uh, pick the mono channel and how to record your vocals. Recording audio in Ableton. Just go insert a track and create an audio track. 
again, same thing. We always create an audio track to record vocals. So you create an audio track and click on, actually we'll get into that later. Just create an audio track and recording audio in Audacity. I'm gonna share this link so you can take a look if you're using Audacity. Recording levels. So once you set up everything up, this is the most trickiest part ever. One second. Uh, give me one moment, ladies. I'm recording this video during work, by the way. <laughs> totally forgot that my break time is over. Okay. Okay. So you should record vocals at an average of minus 18 dB for 24 bit resolution. So we'll get into the details of those uh, because it's a deep topic. But for now, just know that your, record, uh, your recording level is very important and make sure you're, rec uh, you're not recording uh, your vocals too high. What is too high? Minus six is too high. Minus eight is okay. Minus 10 is good, almost good. Minus 12, great. Minus uh, 13 is definitely good. Minus 15, a little bit low. Uh, we can increase the volume. So in audio world, average minus 18 is recommended. So if you're recording the audio, when you record the audio like this, when you uh, capture the audio like this, if your dynamic range is between minus 12 dB and 20 dB, you're good, you're safe. You can even take it to minus 10 dB to 18 dB because you're vo recording vocals. And vocals, vocalists, they have dynamic range. So it's not like playing an instrument with high um, uh, sustain. So when you're recording vocals, it, there are parts that are going to be punchier. There are parts that are going to be like really high, like minus eight, minus six, even minus four, because some vocalists are singing some parts really loud. And but don't worry, we're gonna tame. We're gonna uh, teach you how to tame those peaks. But average level should be around minus twelve and minus twenty, uh, or my, between minus ten or minus eighteen. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you're not peaking too much, like minus uh, four, minus three, minus five. These are really, it means that it's really peaking. Okay, so what you do, you record the audio and you check your uh, dynamic range, not the dynamic range, you check your peak levels. And if your peak levels are really high, then you don't want that. So you're gonna record one more time you're gonna record one more time, you're gonna record one more time, you're gonna record again and again, and then finally you're gonna find your safe levels. And once you find your safe levels, don't forget that because you're gonna need that information for the next time you're recording. Okay, make sure you are around between 12 and 18. Actually, I said 12, actually I wanna say 10. It's better. Mm -hmm. So max 10, okay, max 10. Maybe we make it nine. We don't want to be too difficult on you <laughs> to start because I know you're uh, you're gonna peak. I'm sure, so uh, it's difficult. But this is the most trickiest part ever. And once you get this done, you're good. Fifty percent, your recordings are gonna be great. Mm -hmm. So good. This is the good option. This is the good level. A uh, good dynamic range. Look at this. It's not peaking too much. It's not too low. Look at this. This is too quiet. You don't want this. You don't want this. This is probably minus, minus 28, minus 25. This is probably, uh, I, I can tell by looking at the audio wave, uh, sound wave. So I can actually tell this is too low. And this one is too loud. This is clipping all over the place. You don't want this. This is probably even more than minus three minus five and it's clipping since it's clipping is probably above zero so and we don't want that you're gonna see the red dot once you're recording uh you're gonna see the red dot and you don't want that red dot okay make sure you are around minus 12 and 18 uh, we can say we can do it as minus 10 let's make it e a little bit easier for you minus 10 
maximum minus 10. Let's make it 9. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, these are different for everybody. So it depends on your voice. That's why we created this Sonia's sampling bootcamp. So that way we can just discuss about the dynamic range of the audio we recorded. And we talk that way we can talk about the peaks of that audio. And these are all helpful information. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be a music producer to know all this. And uh, if you're a vocalist, if you're writing songs, if you're recording, and if you're, you're recording vocals and sending, sending those to some producers, they're going to need the same quality, ladies. They're going to need the same uh, process. So make sure you're, not ar you're around minus 10 and minus, eight, minus 18 average, maximum nine, minus 9. But it can depend depends on, the, on your voice. So when you go on Logic, look at this. These are all the same thing. So this is another DAW logic. This is Ableton, DAW, this is Pro Tools, this is Audio Audacity, but they all have these faders. Do you know what why they have? Because you will be able to see your input signal. You're gonna be able to see how high it is. And how you're gonna see that? You're gonna check the peak level. Look at this. 7.4. We don't want this. We have to be above zero, uh, sorry, below zero which is we have to be even below minus 10. So if your signal, so let's say you recorded a signal and you play it back just to see what you recorded. So you hear your signal and this is your peak level. And if it's peaking around this area, 7.4, no way. You can't use that audio. Just uh, make sure uh, this, after you play back, this is gonna show around minus 10. So you want to make sure you don't peak above minus 10. Same thing for Ableton. You record, you play it back, and you click on this area, this little minus 6.50. So when, once you click on it, it is going to reset. That way you can just play it back again and you can find out your peak levels. This is your peak level. This is going to tell you that, hey, you're peaking around minus 6.55 and it's not good for you. Lower. Lower what? Lower the volume. Exactly. Same thing for Pro Tools. And you're just going to see your peak levels here. Look at the peak level. Minus 7, 8. Sorry, minus 7.7. 7. It's not bad. It's actually good. I like it because what we can do, we can tame those peaks later and we can totally get something good from this. Not bad at all. For Auto City, same thing. You just check your input. Uh, you just check your peak levels. So this is for the peak levels. You want to make sure you're not peaking. You're going to keep hearing this from me because it's very important. Uh, most of the time, these artists are super talented. They're super talented. They record their voice. They send it to the producers and producers are like, no, oh, she doesn't know how to record. I need to, I need to get it done. I need to get another uh, artist. I need to get another top line singer. I need to get a lot, another top uh, a, a songwriter uh, or, you know, a, an artist to work with. So just make sure you are on, you're keeping your safe levels and you're going to rock in this indus industry if you, if you're comfortable with these. And how do you get comfortable with these? By practicing, not by checking these uh, PowerPoints. The PowerPoints are fine. They're useful tools, definitely. I'm going to share this on, on, uh, on our YouTube channel, of course. But how are you going to get comfortable with all these peak levels and all? How are you going to get comfortable getting a good sound? How are you going to take good picture of your sound? How are you going to do that? By practicing, ladies. And that's your only weapon. Okay, thank you so much for joining uh, and we'll talk about more during the next session and let me know what, uh, let me, let, let me guys know what you think uh, in the comments below. If you ever have any input, you can totally let me know. Take care of yourself. See you, bye.